here at BlizzCon 2015. Uh, Michelle, so much information coming out of that WoW Legion q &A. I know, I know it. I'm so excited. I know. You know, but I will say, I love the fact that Jesse Cox got in the final question of, is Jaina a Dreadlord? <laughs> I knew it, and I was, as I was sitting here, he knew it. I called it. You I asked the question that. literally as he was asking I, I was like, is Jaina a Dreadlord? That's what he's going to ask. Uh, but no, we had such incredible stuff come out, yeah, out of that lots panel. Lots of information. Um, I'm sad to not be sitting in the audience, but glad we could hear all of it. Uh, World of Warcraft Legion is one of the most anticipated expansion in years, and for good reason. For the first time since the Warcraft RTS, you'll be exploring one of Warcraft's most mythic regions, the Broken Isles. Time now for a quick tour of Legion. The Broken Isles, as all things in World of Warcraft, started before the Sundering. And the Sundering was the great catastrophic, cataclysmic event that shattered the world as we know it. It used to be a great and powerful night elf civilization 10,000 years ago. And after the Sundering, most of the Broken Isles was actually sunk and sent beneath the, the ocean, as it were. 30-ish years ago, an orc warlock named Gul'dan came back to the Broken Isles to raise part of it to serve his dark master Sargeras, and that is what became known as the Tomb of Sargeras. So that is basically the origin of the Broken Isles. How players start this expansion is unique and different than any expansion to date. You don't start in a single zone in this expansion. You can actually pick whatever zone you want to start in. You can start in Stormheim, or you can start in High Mountain or Azuna. The only exception to that is Suramar, which we've left as kind of a high level, max level zone that you work your way up to. So it's totally unique, and how we've played it so far, it feels really awesome. If I were to pick my favorite zone, it would probably be a tie between Valshara and Stormheim. Valshara is uh, a zone that is, if, if you're into druids and night elves and things like that in, in, in Warcraft, it's your paradise. It is a druidic paradise. It is the heart of druidism in Azeroth. It's where druidism started. And we really re represent and reflect that in the zone. It also has some killer areas in it, like Black Rick Hold, which is unlike any other parts of the zone. So you'll see this giant castle or keep that was actually built by night elves, um, haunted and ruinous. It feels like a real kind of fantasy homage to that classic manor or castle on a hill with a village beneath. It's a killer, killer zone. As far as Stormheim goes, this is where we see the, the Vrykul pantheon of gods, their, their creators. This is where we see the origins of their Valkyr, the, the, the angel, angelic Vrykul that pick up the wounded on the field of battle and take them to Valhalla, or what we call the Halls of Valor, where we see uh, Hell or Helheim, which is a zone in there as well, where we see the damned go down and become the cursed Kvaldir. And it also has a really awesome side story with Sylvanas and Gen Greymane that I think players are going to really enjoy. So there are a lot of new and interesting and awesome and powerful and fearsome and ferocious creatures in Legion that we're going to have seen for the first time in, in, in Warcraft. We get to see the full demon lineup in this expansion, right? It's called Legion. There's demons everywhere. Up until now, we've only really fought the B team. We've never gotten the full A team of the Legion. The, the, the most badass Legion demons are now here. And so there isn't just one, but there's a whole lineup of these guys, and these guys are ready to kill. I think what impact Legion will have with the fans and how it will resonate will, will fall mostly on the artifact system, the, the acquisition of these powerful legendary weapons, these, these weapons of, of myth that players have been clamoring for, for for over a decade at this point. Our endgame for Legion is something we put a immense amount of focus on. We've been really working hard. We've been listening to the fans. We really want to make sure that we're providing something for the players that is enduring absolutely representative of what the, a, they expect coming into a, an expansion with, with demons. Um, so those are the things that I feel like will impact them the most. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for Legion. Uh. And speaking of 
Joining us here on the Blizz Couch is Brian Holinka, Senior Game Designer of World of Warcraft. Holinka, thank you so much yeah. for coming. Oh, it's awesome to be here. So excited to, to see you again. <laughs> Love the hair. Oh, I think you. Yes, it's it's a... Lots of compliments on your hair. Thank you, All sir. So I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, it's so cool to be here again. Uh, well, we are, we are very excited. There's been so many announcements today. And one of the big ones earlier, it was every single quest ever completed and every reward ever will be included. How will that manifest? Well, you mean like with the scaling system? Yes. Well, you know, it's just a, a really cool way for players. We want them to be able to go do anything, you know, like think about all the times that you've gone out like to play an expansion and like you both start playing together and then like one of you has to go to work <laughs> yeah. and the other yeah, person yeah. I hate when that happens. Playing, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, we can't play together. That uh, scaling technology is going to let you, everybody go to different places so that they can play together and even if things don't start off the same. Yeah, the scaling stuff we were watching, that Huge. honestly one of the Huge. most exciting I, parts. Literally, I have I have a buddy that I play religiously World of Warcraft with and we're con I'm, he's constantly like going, oh yeah, I just did like 12 more quests, yeah. and I'm like, but yeah. then, okay, so now we're just talking on the phone while I'm doing the 12 quests yeah. you've already done. And now it's going to be like, oh, did you do that zone yet? No? Okay, let's go both go to that zone. Well, and also and dungeons, too, right? Yeah, that was yeah. the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Expansions, you were like, yep. oh, I need one more level, and then I can do that dungeon with yeah. you. Or, oh, gosh, I just leveled out of that dungeon, yep, and totally. now it seems like you can go in and out whenever you want. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, when you think about what World of Warcraft is about, we always talk about it's about playing with friends, it's about being together, that's why we do things like the character boost. This is another system where we're trying to get people to be able to play with each other as much as possible. Yeah, and another way I think that you're doing it that's really cool is by just the class order hall. Yeah. The fact that you're allowing the classes to be able to congregate into one place. Yeah. And I feel like that's such a cool thing for the community in order to, sure. to congregate and get together. Yeah. Do you guys have any sort of plans to say, Here's all the hunters. Okay, hunters, yeah. here's a huge quest for every hunter that is in here to do all together. Ever. Because, oh, yeah, no. You have no healers. <laughs> all hunters on the server. Have, well, we, yeah. we've done it before with Warcraft Hunters. You know, yeah. We've had like 800. Yeah, we totally, went to, yeah. Yeah, we've done this before. Yeah. Do you guys have any kind of ways to connect the community within these? With the, with well, these certainly, I, I think, you know, one of the pieces of feedback we got about uh, World of Draenor was like, oh, I'm in my garrison. It's super cool. I have my yeah, yeah. But I want to see other people. Yes. So, oh, it's actually going to be, I think, these these two places, right? In Dalaran, everybody's going to be together there, kind of congregating between classes, but then everybody's going to go into the order halls. And yeah, it's just going to be hunters. And they're going to yeah. you're going to see general chat talking about, hey, you know, what, you know, how do I finish this quest, hunters, and all that. So I, I think it's going to be a really cool dynamic how we see people I want to see hunters, like, fight against warriors, yeah. like, having a huge, crazy, just Well, you know, PvP is my wheelhouse, so I certainly would welcome, uh, like, little class battles. How uh, fun would that be? Yeah, so it's, it's just awesome to see. Those are the things we often, of, often see in our Asian regions where they are very good at organizing world PvP events. And a lot of times we see that on these servers, like uh, the North American servers too. Yeah. So it would be cool to see that kind of stuff emerges. So and lots of changes coming to PvP yep. in Legion. Can you talk a little bit about what we can expect, especially maybe with the prestige? Yeah, concept? certainly. You know, one of the main things that we were, were thinking about with PvP was Oftentimes, a lot of our players are really into raiding, they're really into dungeons, and they, they spend a lot of time investing in their gear, yeah. building up yes. that gear, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then they step into PvP, and they kind of have to, like, start over from scratch. And that was a big deterrent to a lot of people for participating in PvP. Also, one thing about PvP is people kind of want to be on a pretty equal level. Uh, yeah. You know, like you, you know, you see the, the great example of, like, Overwatch or Heroes of Storm. I go into that match, I'm on the same even keel. So, on one hand, we want people to feel a little bit stronger when they get more gear, but on the other hand, yeah. you got to feel equal. So we're doing away with uh, PvP gear uh, as its own separate thing. Now all gear kind of works the same. And, and when yes. you walk into a PvP zone, we actually set the stats that you're going to have based on your spec. Oh, so, so it's, it's a dynamic yes. as you enter, yes. not based on your gear specifically. Exactly. And so you'll get a little stronger based on your gear, yeah. but it's not the type of gaps that we've seen before where I go yeah. into, the, you know, into a battleground and I just get one shot by the guy who's rocking full conquest gear or yeah. whatnot. Yeah, I'm yeah. so happy you're changing that. It's honestly one of the reasons that it was hard to get back into PvP yeah. was for that reason. Um, one of the other things that people do, battling-wise, uh, that has a lot of people asking on the internet right now, 
pet battles. Mm -hmm. So ah. are we going to see pet battling go past? Are we going to see the pets be able to level past level 25? You know, I, I'm probably not the right person for that, but I think <laughs> they're, they're, I think we are doing more pets and more more battles, more content for them. Um, but it, it's unfortunate I don't know too much about it. John Craft is the right John and Craft is, yeah. who, is he who I would ask yes. if we could see maybe a mobile game for pet battling for Warcraft? Boy, would that be great? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> I mean, we've seen it such a success with it with Hearthstone on mobile, yeah. so it would be so cool. Yeah, and I you know certainly a lot of people, like, they're really into the collection game of pet battles, and that one, is what yep. we think is so important. So when we go into a new expansion, there are new pets to get, and people, you know, pick them up, and then they start able to go back, and I, I love think, the pets. you know, part of the pets, too, <laughs> they even like doing PvP pet, you know, battles, and, and kind of oh, moving yeah. it out and everything. So I think that type of content is building more pets for you to collect and go into it. I named my Molten Corgi after you. Ooh. I didn't know that. Well, well I'm, I'm very flattered. Now. We got all excited and dorked out about it last year. Yeah, we so. did. Well, I, yeah, we talked a lot about Ashran last year. I and, know. Uh, and how exciting that is. And that kind of like, you know, that whole experience and, and seeing how the, the mainstream player is super excited about PvP, yeah. uh, it really drove a lot of our PvP decisions this year. Because even though the, the gear isn't going to count, players are still going to have a progression that they work yeah. through. There's 50 levels of honor that they kind of work through. And as they go up, they earn these very PvP specific abilities, things that only work in PvP uh, that don't affect the PvE game. And what's nice about that is now we can do a lot of things in PvP that don't affect the rest of the game. So it's a win-win. Yeah. The, the yeah. players who lo really love PvP, we can make something new and fresh for them. And the PvE players will feel like they're not, you know, messing up our yeah, house yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. So, so. so you also uh, took a long, hard look at almost every single class in the game. Oh, yes, yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic news coming out about some of the, some of the classes. So yeah. Why is it specifically that now is the time to take a look? Is it because of the feedback from Garrisons maybe, where people are like, I'm starting to feel sort of not like I'm role-playing my character yeah. class anymore? I, I think it has a lot more to do with the addition of artifacts. Oh, got it. Yeah. You know, like where we're kind of doubling down on class identity, yeah. and we're kind of like, hey, this is, we're, we're doing all these things with the artifact weapons to make all these classes feel special and unique. We should probably just revisit the classes as, uh, as a whole. And also, we're kind of in a place where we just have a lot of things that modify your base class. You know, we have artifacts, yeah. we have talents, we have these new PvP yeah. talents. And so there's so many things that you can do to customize your class. We kind of got to revisit what your class means as a whole. So that's really why we feel like it's a good opportunity to say, you know, what's a, what's a subtlety rogue? Oh, they're a master of stealth. That sounds super cool. What's a retribution paladin? as opposed yeah, to just a course. normal warrior. Oh, he's a holy warrior who's like returning with, you know, holy spirited vengeance. Or, yeah. a, or, a, or a frost decay dual wielding. Yes, exactly. What's up with right. that? Right, frost decay <laughs> dual wielding, that sounds great. Well, you know. I mean, because th when I think about class fantasy of, of a frost decay, I, I think Arthas. Yeah. And he has. Well, you know, our unholy TKs, of course, have like a two-hand or very big two-handed sword. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, it's Frostmourne, right? I think the challenge there is, and we have this with all of our artifacts, how can we give you Frostmourne? Like, this yeah. is a sword you can't that give corrupted Arthas' no. yeah. stole, you know? Yeah, right. And so we have to do something a little different, but still kind of feels like So was that the reasoning behind it? Was yeah. it because you didn't want them to feel like it was they were getting their Azul sword? Well, yeah, you didn't want to exactly, like, if you're going to do a two-handed weapon for a Frosty K and it's not Frostmourne, then right. what it would it be? Very strange. All right, I It makes a lot I... more sense to say, okay, what if it's, like, shards of Frostmourne, like, you know, something rebuilt? You know, and we already did I uh, Shadowmourne, a two-handed right. axe. Yes. Yep. That was totally a legendary weapon. Back from Lich King. So it's kind of the time for us to do something a little different. I love that. that. Wow, well, lots of great so stuff. stuff. Yep. Thank you so, so much, Brian, for yeah, coming no and problem. helping us get through this stuff. Uh, talk about lots of stuff. That's great. Amazing esports updates happening. Time for another one. Uh, let's send it back to the arena where Malik is standing by with Kim Fan. Malik, what is happening? Hey guys, I am joined once again by the masterful Kim fan. And guys, uh, esports has been crazy. It's been a great day for esports, wouldn't you agree? It's been amazing. I'm so excited. We already have uh, one champion we can talk yeah. about later. We right. have a finals that's about to start, two finals that's about to so start. Two finals, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, good. So, so to kick things out, I want to remind everybody that the WoW championships are coming up soon. Uh, skill Captain SK Gaming. Yeah, yeah European yeah, yeah. powerhouses. European powerhouses, Skill Cap, they were the runner-ups last year. They're going to be looking to bring the championship back home. Uh, moving on, Hearthstone, we have a world champion we in Hearthstone. We do! It's Askaka 
Taylor from Sweden. He just defeated Hot Form from Canada yes. um, on the main stage of Hearthstone. I was there in the back. I was able to congratulate him. It's such an amazing victory from him. Indeed. Um, I'm, yeah, there's a lot of people that are proud. You know, I saw Hot Form's Druid deck going against the Rogue deck, and I told myself, I don't know. I don't know if he can. That Rogue deck is pretty strong. He plays that really strongly. Yeah, he yeah. does. And, and he was playing it strongly right beforehand as well. And oh my gosh, I mean, he seems so happy. Look at Asaka. Yeah. He defeats Hot Form 3 and 0. Oh, that's I a mean, very, that's that's a very a, interesting that's name. That's a convincing victory right there. It is an interesting name. I was told that Asaka means cheesecake. Yeah. And, and sweet. Cheesecake. Cheesecake. Oh. So we have a cheesecake winner. A uh, cheesecake winner. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Yes, yes. 2 and 0. It was so amazing, man. Team DK is a, one of the top teams that people were expecting to win this right, tournament. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, so now they'll be facing Dignitas, team who Dignitas. took out Navi. I, tell, I keep telling everybody, do not sleep on the European teams. And you know what, Cloud9, they had a very interesting build. I saw a Murky, a Brightwing, and an Abathur all in the same composition. That's something you don't really see much in championship. I, the crowd was going crazy over a Murky on the team composition and then taking the win. Right. It was an exciting match. Right, right. Now let's talk about this match that's going to pop out right behind us. We have Life and SOS, the 2014 world champion, going against the 2013 world champion for the 2015 you, world championship you, in StarCraft 2. You cannot ask for a better grand finals in StarCraft. Yes. It is, oh my goodness, Protoss, who is the next race in Legacy of the Void, exactly. against Life, who plays Zerg, right. Heart of the Swarm. And this is the last Heart of the Swarm tournament of the year before we launch Legacy of the Void on Tuesday. Yeah. So will he take that crowning champion for the Zerg, yeah. or will SOS make his Protoss fans proud? You know, I, I think it doesn't matter here who wins, but it will tell you that two titles for BlizzCon. Right. You know, who's going to get that? Right. Who right, do you right. think? I, I'm, I, I don't know. Life, man, he just keeps on playing too strongly. You know, just when you think he's getting ready to get put out and his mm -hmm. back's against the wall, he just comes back and he surprises everyone. So So we should take a bet. Like, who do you think is going to win? Uh, take a bet? I don't know. Because uh, my, my bet, I'm going to say first because uh, you can pick the other person or we can be the same. Uh, but okay. I'm thinking life. I think life is going to take it. We're on the same page. We're on the same page? We're on the same page. We think life is going to take it. Let's take it. It's life. All right, anyways, guys, we're going to post up and watch this match. Let's kick it back to the couch with Michelle and Alex. Take it away, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Malik and Kim. Wow, it's been an amazing weekend for esports, and it's been an amazing BlizzCon so far. So far, we went out and asked the community, what's your favorite part of BlizzCon? So my favorite part of BlizzCon has been all the panels, the esports. StarCraft event. I think the favorite part was seeing the WoW movie trailer come out. I like all of the announcements for Heroes of the Storm, especially the announcement that Tracer's gonna be in the game. Friends. I got a chance to meet so many friends. You get to meet the people you've been playing the games with for, you know, over the year and over the span of years. Meeting everybody. We had like 20 people from our guild come out for World of Warcraft. This guy came from Australia. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. I met this girl, Sarah, and I think we're probably going to be friends for a really long time. We just got married, so it's our honeymoon. Uh, one of the favorite parts is definitely the cosplay. Cosplay contest. I skipped Halloween this year, but this is like an extended Halloween weekend and it's pretty awesome. And then also getting to play the new games like Overwatch. The announcements about Legion and then test playing Legion. I've done that three times so far. I like playing the new expansion. Our whole raid came and now we're going to go play a new expansion together. I think it's just great that everyone can just kind of be groovy, be themselves, and it's a fantastic time here. There's nothing else that brings so many people in the world together like this convention. I mean, when we came on the airport, we were in a shuttle, no one talked to each other. One person goes, anybody here play World of Warcraft? Before you know it, the place is a party. Yeah, everybody's It's a party in the shuttle. And the fact that I got to hang out with my baby brother all the way in the town, absolutely a special moment. I just think it's a really good place because these are my kind of people, this is my family, and this is what I love about Blizzard. Ah, it's so cool to take a look at everything going on around us because we are like in the uh, eye we're of in the storm. A, we're in a bubble and community is circling around us is what's happening It here. is. And speaking <laughs> of community, we have joining with us here on the Blizz Couch, some call him the King of Salt, some know him as the <laughs> biggest Blizzard nerd that you will ever meet. Please welcome internet personality, Jesse Cox. Hey! Hello. How 
Hello. Hi, Jesse. How are you? Oh, my goodness. I'm doing great. <laughs> I feel like I'm from the future right now. You I are. I have so many things plugged into me. <laughs> don't, don't move. You'll explode. <laughs> is this, if you pull one out, I'm just dead? Yeah, exactly. Is that how this works? Is, is how it works. support? It's Hunger I, Games. It I is, yeah. Up there? Is that what happened? I think so. Yeah, you know, we were watching, and I had no idea that you were actually hosting the Q&A workshop yeah, panel. Job. How did that go? Thank you. Uh, for your your humble eyes. Uh, <laughs> no, it was great. It's, I mean, I, for years, was one of those guys in the audience asking ridiculous questions. Yep. I stood up there three years ago with a poster of a snake tail and gun track and was like, what is this, Metzen? And he <laughs> laughed at me then. But now I'm up on stage, so I guess we're good. I know, the and it was funny. Works. Yeah. It was funny, on the very last question, he, he asked what happened, what happened? She literally asked the exact same question as you were asking the question. As I know what he's going to ask right now. It's the most important question there ever was. And what is it? Is Jaina a Dreadlord? And we all know the answer. It's yes, obviously. <laughs> but I just felt that I wanted to hear them say it. I know, right? And, and they, they lied. They lied. <laughs> they said oh no. God. Well, tell us a little bit, because there's some people at home maybe might be unfamiliar with you. I don't know who they would be. But tell us your history about Blizzard Games and how you got into it. Oh, my goodness. Well, I am uh, a nerd by life, by trade. Good. As so say we all. Yes. And so 22 years ago, I played my first Blizzard game. Ah. And I have played Blizzard games ever since and been that guy who has played Blizzard games. There's a period in my life when I know other games existed, <laughs> but all I did was play Blizzard games. Yeah, right. Like, if people talk about a certain console or something. No idea. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> like, I, I missed all of that. And so, yeah, I'm a giant fanboy for all of this. And I couldn't even tell you how excited I was to just be a part of this. To be here right now yeah. is insane. On Blizz Couch? It's in, to be with you <laughs> is insane. Blizz Couch. Ah, you, you stop. I try. No, it, <laughs> this is like, my entire career on the internet started because of Warcraft. So I it, know it did. Yeah, and, and the thing is, what's cool about you, and and it's a little known, little known fact, but you used to be a history teacher. It's true. And so is, do you think that some of this, because you are so into the lore, do you think it's the history teacher in you that just dorks out oh, on the lore yes. as much as it is? That's absolutely what it is. Yeah, I am a giant nerd for lore. Redshirt guy and I, I ask him questions just to see if I can stump him. And he's always like, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I thought you said you had said hard questions. Yeah, no, he just looks at me like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I'm like, sorry. So I know you can never, I know it's, it's, it's a horrible question, but I have to ask, what have you seen that is your favorite announcement coming out of BlizzCon? I know, right? Um, yeah, every time. It's crazy. This, like last year, Overwatch was everything. Totally. Yeah. This year, they gave you something for everything. Yes. And it's so tough to be like, all right, well, I went through and I played, I played as the Illidari. I went through and I played as the new characters in Overwatch. Right. I went through and I did new StarCraft stuff. Like, I just have done everything there is to do right now. The only thing I haven't done yet, which I need to do, is go play with the Explorers in Hearthstone. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually have not done that either. I'm dying to. It looks amazing. I, I missed out on the voice of uh, the Murloc, and I can't remember his name to say. Uh, Sir Finley Murgleton. Yes. yes. Oh, la, 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 I, I was curious what his voice sounded like, because in my mind, I just wanted him to be like, a Murgle Gurgle. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> That'd be amazing. That is he, he's like, fantastic. Murgle. You have such a high affinity toward Murlocs. I love Murlocs. What oh, is it? Murlocs. What is it about Murlocs and Jesse Cox? They're the underdog. Hmm. They're, they, they've been slaughtered and murdered for so long. Endlessly. Endlessly. <laughs> but you know what? They keep coming back. They keep showing up. They, if I was them, I'd go to the bottom of the ocean. And chill. And just never get out of there. I'd be like, Neptalon, bro, get me out of this place. <laughs> Hang up and go. But they keep coming back. It's true. Yeah. When you play Hearthstone, do you play a Murloc deck? I, d I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a ridiculous Murloc deck, yes. And uh, I... I to oh my god, I totally forgot about Heroes. Yeah. Oh god, Heroes. I, I played as the uh, Chogal. Chogal with my dear friend Crendor, and it is one of the silliest experiences of my life. 
I, I love it. I think later on we're going to stream some of it. Oh, oh yeah, so nice. So excited for Chogall. I want to see it. the two of you. I wish the two of you guys were the voice for Chogall. I mean, no offense no, to whoever's I voicing don't. it. I'm no, sorry, I whatever. <laughs> but the two of you guys, voice. I just imagine you guys as a two-headed ogre at times. I, I would challenge that and say, Blizzard, now that I have your attention, <laughs> if you ever want to put Krendor and I in World of Warcraft as two dueling goblin vendors with stalls across from each other selling only <laughs> useless gray items. Amazing. And we curse at each other and throw tomatoes like, hey, come over here. And we get people <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you're the worst. And we just throw stuff at each other. I'm just saying. I would, just, I would visit I those want vendors. That. We only sell <laughs> broken I win buttons. <laughs> Amazing. No, Just gray, the worst stuff. Gray items are my favorite. I have a contest in my guild, so m our very last tab, they can't open it. It's just the gallery. It's the gray gallery. And I have a contest. Whoever gets it, they get 20,000 gold, whoever gets the best gray item. But they stop pumping them out. I'm like, the gray items Only are the gray, best. Like rotten apple. Yeah. yeah. And uh, headless baby doll. Yeah. Just the worst stuff. Oh Headless. my God! But it's We're... all for like 25, 30, 50 gold. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh my God! Well, look, Jesse, thank you so much thank for you. coming. Continue to enjoy the con as it goes. But we have got the Heroes of the Storm Battlegrounds panel coming up right at the top of the hour. But first, it's time to profile the team that created the soundtrack for your epic battles in Heroes of the Storm. Let's step into the Foley room and get an inside look at one of the most unique jobs at Blizzard Entertainment. Well, the sound effects are really based on individual heroes themselves. So for a hero, we're trying to tell you about the fantasy of this hero, what are their abilities, and how do they feel to play in the game. Whereas music, we're really trying to get you into the environment that you're in. So each battleground has their own specific music, and each one we try to transport the player there to get the feeling of this environment they're in. When we started creating music for Heroes of the Storm, we realized um, it presented some interesting challenges in that we wanted to have its own identity, and yet it was pulling on characters and areas from our other games, our other franchises. So one of the cool aspects of working on Heroes of the Storm and at Blizzard generally is the collaborative nature that goes into our development. The guys I work with are really cool, talented guys. I mean, on any given day, we can get into their office and we don't know what we're gonna get into. This is uh, the Blizzard Foley room. This is like the sound kitchen almost in some ways. You can pull some pops. Those are awesome. Nothing is more literal than using a weapon for weapon sounds. We'll get a variety of objects and just sort of see what comes out of it. We'll be looking at individual heroes and talking about how we want them to sound, but uh, you may have swords and pots and pans and you know leather kind of items in there and we'll see what comes out of it. It's just really cool to see the creativity these guys have and what they're able to put together. A lot of the ideas that we get are accidents, and it's it's those accidents that turn into something really cool and inspiring. Even though you know we're probably more sensitive to sound, when we start to add like sounds that aren't synthesized, stuff that comes from like real world objects, you know, you're not really fooling anybody. I mean, it connects them to the real world, whether it's a sci-fi game or a fantasy. It's fun because it creates a personal experience for us, which then inspires us to you know make really cool sounds. I really like seeing everything come together. It's the process. You know, we, we start off where you get a pencil sketch from the art team. Uh, someone may even have less than that and just have a paper design of this is what we want to do with this character. And we're one of the last pieces of once art has done their, their work and everything's signed off, sound is sort of one of those last layers of polish to come in and really bring a character to life. And that's what you come to know as a character. You know their voice, you know how they sound, and it's great being a part of that. Heroes of the Storm, you have my heart. That's we so cool. love it. It's so amazing. Speaking of Heroes of the Storm, let's head into Hall D to see the Heroes of the Storm Battleground panel.